to welcome everybody to Baptist Men's Day here at Red Mountain. And uh, if you're a guest, we want to thank you for coming. This right here is a hot item. It's called a Connect card. You put your info on it, and if you bring it to the Welcome Center, there's a little table in the glass part of the building, you can get a little bag full of Red Mountain stuff, like cups and pins, and it's amazing. I've seen the bag. You should do it. We're not going to sell your information, we promise. If you don't want us to call you, we won't. We will not come knock on your door. But we would like to know who you are since you did come to church. Um, if you're a guest online, obviously you can't have one of these. So uh, send us an email and let us know that you're watching, and we would like to thank everyone online watching as well. If you would, please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house, to live in a country that we can be unharassed to worship you and praise you and hear your word and sing songs of praise. Um, and though today is, is Baptist Men's Day, Lord, uh, we pray that every day is your day, especially in our lives, Lord, that we would live worshipful, that we would spread the gospel and follow the spirit wherever it leads. I pray for my brothers who are going to come up after me and uh, do different parts of the service, Lord, that everything we do today would honor you um, and a special pair uh, for Paul, who is going to give us a message. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I'd like to welcome everybody to our, our Baptist Men's Day as we celebrate our, our men and uh, what uh, the Lord has called us to do. And, uh, and on our missions, we have a mission statement. And our objective as men's ministry is to build and create opportunities for men to build Christ-centered trusting relationships in which we can encourage and equip others, right, our other, other men, to grow in Christ's likeness, right? We're supposed to emulate Christ. We're supposed to be like Jesus. We're supposed to do what he, he, he did in this earth. He didn't come to uh, be served, he come to serve. And that's what our men are called to do as well. So that's what we want to uh, center our, our Christ likeness around him and doing that. And to serve others in need, right? That's part of our Baptist men's missions. We want to, to create uh, opportunities where we can serve in other ministries and in other ways to help people in our community, help people uh, outside our community, outside the state, and even outside the country. Our, our church is great as far as our ministries go. We, you know, we have uh, ministries that we serve in West Virginia. Uh, we have ministries that serve over in, even in Moldova. So uh, as small as our little church is, we've got hands all over this world. So we can be thankful that God has, has led our pastor and our church to be so uh, have such initiative to go out and to, to be uh, Christ, Christ-minded like that and to serve others in need. And our number one, one of our, probably our number one it is, is to evangelize the lost, right? To create opportunities that we can, we can go out and, and talk to others about Christ, right? Again, we're supposed to do that. That's part of our, our, our calling as, as men of God and women of God. As God appointed spiritual leader of our household men, uh, when men are, ex- we're supposed to accept and grow in Christ, his family will follow, right? We, we're supposed to set that example in our families uh, for our wives and for our children, uh, so they, they would, if, if they don't have a, a godly man in the house to lead them, uh, it's, the opportunity is, is uh, less likely that they will, they will come to know Christ as their, their Lord and Savior. So, men, it's up to us to stand up and to be the, the leaders in our home, to be uh, not the, the man with the whip, right, but, uh, but be uh, the, the, the godly leader that we're supposed to be as, as husbands and as fathers. Satan knows um, what we go through, and he tries to keep men and convince them of our self-sufficiencies. Other men fully, only other men understand fully the world's pull on men, which keeps us from surrendering to and growing in Christ. Right? So we invite all men to join us in our journey as we grow in our relationship with Christ and each other through spiritual growth, missions work, and outreach. And some of the, the, the missions that we have... Uh, we have a handyman ministry that we've had for years, and also we, we have a dis, uh, disaster recovery uh, ministry as well. We've got a disaster trailer, which we have all kinds of chainsaws and, and uh, carpentry equipment that we can build ramps with. We have a, a ramp, uh, handicap ramp ministry. We also have a prison ministry. It hadn't been active for, for the last couple of years due to the COVID epidemic, but we're planning on getting back into the, the, the prison ministry, and that's another way that we can reach those that, that God called us to reach, the ones that are behind prisons, and uh, um, we're, we're supposed to help them as well. So we just invite you, uh, men, to, to come and be a part of our, our men's ministry. We have our missions night, and uh, we also have a men of iron night, which right now we're going through the 33 series, and it's a great series on how men are supposed to step up and be the godly men in our households and in their communities as well. So it's a great series, and we'd love for y'all to... We start off with about four men in this, this, um, this 
series that we started about five years ago. And now it's up to about 12 or 13 men. So, uh, and it's really a great way to see how we're supposed to, to lead our families and lead our, our households. So, but I would encourage you men to be a part of that. And we also have a couple of conferences that are coming up. Men, we would like to invite you to, and that's the, uh, the men's conference here that we have at Antioch Baptist Church. And we're having it February the 3rd and the 4th. It'll be, it'll be Friday night and then again Saturday morning. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And you can see either me or Dave or, or uh, any of our men about that conference. We also have a men's conference coming up in Rocky Mountain. That would be an overnight conference. If anybody's interested in that, please see me, and I can give you more information about attending that conference as well. But all these are intended to help our men to grow to be the spiritual leaders that God has called us to be. <clears throat> and I, if you would, I, please remember Brenda and, and Don, Don Sharp. Uh, this week they learned that the remnants of the first tumor that Brenda had has been growing again. Uh, so please pray for mobility and strength for Brenda and strength for Don as he takes care of her. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, the freedom to be in your house, Lord, to, to hear your word, Lord. And pray that we never lose those freedoms. Help us to stand up and fight for those, Lord, whatever it takes. And Lord, just thank you for our men today, Lord. We kind of lift them up to you, Lord, that you just give us the strength, wisdom, and courage to be the men of God that you'd have us to be, Lord. Be the husbands of God that you'd have us to be, Lord, and the, and the father of, of God that you would have us to be, Lord, over our children. And, uh, Lord, to lead our house the way you would have us to, Lord, in a godly way that, that they would grow up to, to be Christians as well, Lord, and to, to know you as Lord and Savior. That's what we're called to do, Lord. And just help us to, to uh, be willing to go out and to serve you, Lord, in whatever capacity you call us to, Lord, and give us, again, the strength and the, the will and, uh, Lord, the, the know how to do that, Lord. And, uh, Lord, we, we, we learn that, Lord, through prayer, Lord, and through being with other men like us, Lord. And, Lord, sometimes we're called to get rid of our friends that, that, that don't help us, Lord, that are leading us down. And, Lord, just, uh, again, but uh, we don't want to forget them. We want to pray about them, Lord, because we all have our number one we need to pray for. But, uh, Lord, sometimes we have to cut some friends go, have to cut them loose. And, Lord, we just thank you again for the time, the opportunity, and freedom to be in your house, Lord, to, to, to celebrate you and, and just give you all the honor and glory for all things, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the choir and all the men that stood up this morning to uh, give praise to the Lord. So uh, just give a hand of applause for the choir. Great job. Great job. chose me it's always been a mystery all my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line with all the other not quite with all the never get it right but it turns out there were ones you were looking for all this time cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. And ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. And Moses had stage fright, and David brought a rock to a sword fight. You picked 12 outsiders, nobody would have chosen any change of the world. Well, the moral of the story is, everybody's got a purpose. So when I hear that devil start talking to me, say, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody, 
trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. And ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood bought faithful member of the family. And did they all forget my name? Well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in history. As another blood bought faithful member of the family. It's all I ever want to be. And did they all forget my name? Well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Yeah. I'm just a nobody. Nobody. I'm tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Gonna save, gonna save my soul. Since you me, you gave my heart a song to you sing. You gave me a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. It's a privilege for me to introduce our guest today. I've known him for close to 40 years. We've worked together for about 35 of those years, side by side, 15 to 20 of those years. He's not the guest speaker. He is an ordained pastor. Um, he's the chaplain at uh, Post 7 in Durham, American Legion. He goes to North Grand Baptist Church, but he does watch our services online. If you've been on our prayer list, he has prayed for you. He is one of the most faithful prayer warriors I know. Um, he comes to Men of Iron. You may know him from there. You may know him from work. I seen Diane come down to speak to him this morning. He worked at Liggett Myers for, I don't know, 35, 36 years. He's retired now. I'm jealous. Um, Please introduce Paul Williams. Well, good morning, Red Mountain. If you would, go ahead and open your Bibles to Psalm 8. Psalm number 8. And some people have asked me, yes, I've known Don about 40 years. And I have honestly seen him grow in his spiritual life. I remember talking to him when he said uh, he was asked to teach Sunday school at Red Mountain. I said, okay, good, do it. And then, then he come and said, well, they've asked me to be a, a deacon. They want to ordain me as a deacon. I said, okay, what's the problem? So I've watched him grow spiritually. I love him. We are brothers, Christian brothers. We were union brothers for years till I retired and, and got out of that union, but we are also military brothers too. And, and I love him. He's, he's, he's all around good guy, and I love him. All, the, all that he's been through, uh, and like that. If you had Psalm 8, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth! who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. 
You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. Psalm number eight. This is a psalm written by David. It is a song of praise. Creation is a hymn of nature. The subject, the subject is uh, the creation, uh, the majesty of God as revealed in the created order and the majesty of humanity. God's supreme creation. The way it's arranged, it shows the majesty of God's name in verse 1. In heaven, verses 1 through 3. And, and the, the, the central question, verse 4, which is what brings me to, to where we are today for Baptist Men's Day. When Don asked me to speak for Men's Day, first thought I had was, well, what do you talk about? Well, you talk about men, but there's different ways you can go with men. And, but this verse came to my mind, uh, what is man that you are mindful of him? So that's, that's where we're going to be at this morning. But the, the central question is there. And he talks about the earth in 5 through 8. And then he gets back to the majesty of God's name in verse 9. Uh, in verses 1 and 2, David gives, God, gives to God the glory that's due his name. And there's two things here that he admires. How plainly, the first one is how plainly God displays his glory himself. Uh, his glory shines in the world. It shines in creation. You can see it in creation. I come out this way. I hit Moore's Mill Road. Come up that hill. There's the mountain. It looked good this morning with the sun coming up. It was beautiful. This is all this beautiful farmland here. And then the mountain, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But we can see the works of creation. We can see his hand in this. We see his glory. We see his majesty in this. We see the, the creation and the providence that proclaimed all the world that there is an infinite being, that he is the creator. Now, now there's, there's uh, we all know we've heard AI, artificial intelligence, but, but there's, there's terms in, in science right now that, that goes intelligent design. You don't necessarily say God, but you, you can say intelligent design among scientists and they won't throw you out. But, but, you say, but, but if you say God, you start bringing God in it, you're getting into a, you're getting into a fighting match then kind of. Kind of. So we, but we see it in his creation, and we can't help but to see it. Now, the second thing that, God, that David admired here is how powerful he proclaims it by the weakest of his creatures. The weakest of his creatures. God takes care of the weak. God takes care of the little children. I saw them all leave just now. Uh, wonderful that y'all have that many here. Praise the Lord for that. The next generation. The next generation. But he takes care of the little children. I'm not going to get political or anything else on you. You can ask yourself, because I've asked myself this, and looking at this, looking at this psalm and, and, and going through the uh, commentary and stuff like that, see it. Well, what about the abortions? God loves and knows every one of those little children. He knew every one of them. He has a special place for each one of them. He has a special place for them. Now, getting back to the little children. They just left here. I watch them up here because I watch y'all online. I watch them. They come up here and they sing. And praise the Lord for them. I love to hear them sing. They had this uncanny ability that they can trust and praise God without reservation, without doubt. They can. They, when they get up here and sing, you can see them smiling. One sings a solo. They sing in unison. It's great. But they can do it without reservation. We can't. We can't. The men sounded great this morning. The, 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 the quintet here sounded great. But most of us wouldn't get up here and sing. Most of us wouldn't. But the, the, but the children have no doubts. No, they have no reservations. So as we get older, we find that this is hard to do. We find this is hard to do. We get exposed to different, different ideas and different things, and, and we may question. We may question. In Matthew 21, 16, 
and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never heard out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. They have no problem. We do. We have a problem. Sometimes we can have a problem. Uh, praising God. It's hard to do. David goes on to tell us in verses 3, three through 9, the rest of the psalm, but we, we're going to break it down a little further than that. He goes on here to magnify and honor, the, to give honor to God by recounting the honors he's put on man. God loves us. God loves us. He's put, he's put an honor on man, especially Jesus Christ. So let's ask this question. What leads him to, to admire the condescending favor of God to man? Why? Why? Why would he love us? We're sinful. Man is sinful. I like Dave's example. Two kids, one toy. Two kids, one toy. We're sinful. We're weak. But David saw the luster. He saw the influence of creation. He saw the heavenly bodies. He saw this. You go out on a moonlit night, a full moon, oh man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, the light. You go out on a, on a new moon, there's no light. The moon's not there. I mean, the, 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 it's, it's not there. The stars are there. And David saw this. David saw this. And by, by this, he can view them. We did. We're looking at the same stars that David looked at. The moon and the stars. We have to consider them. We see them. We can't help but to see them. You can't help but to see them. And it's by this, and among other things, that man is distinguished that we are distinguished from the animals. The animals, if you watch them, look at them, they're framed, they, they look down. They're looking down at the earth. Man is erect, he's looking up. He's looking up, he's looking to heaven. He's looking toward heaven. Now God made the stars, he made the moon, he made the sun, he created everything, he did it easily. Now if we go to build something, we gotta get the tools out We've got to get our hands, got to read the plans or whatever. God didn't have to, he didn't have to move his arm. He just spoke. He spoke and it all came into being. He made him easily. He didn't use the outstretched arm. He done with the word. God created him. He, he created, ordained, and ordained him. And the ordinance of heaven, look, they cannot be altered. We can't alter them. It can never be altered. And we look at it and we see how we consider how his glory shines in the heavens. And here's the question. Here's the question. We see his glory shining in the heavens. We see it in creation. What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that thou art mindful of him? We're weak. We're sinners. But God has created this stuff and he's made it for the benefit of man. He created it and it's but for our benefit. The stars, the, the moon, the sun, all this stuff. We can navigate by the stars when you know you can, you can navigate. You can get a reading. You can, you can be on the ocean and take readings and you can know where you're at. That's a benefit to man. David expresses this admiration in God. And again, what is man that they're mindful of him? Well, God created man. God created man. Nobody has a problem with that, right? Thank you. Good. God created man. But we are sinful and weak. But look, God still cares about us. He still cares about us. He cares about our affairs. He cares about the actions that we take. Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were deists. They believe God created man. They, they believe in creation. That's no problem. 
But they believed that when he created, he walked away. Just let it wind down. You wind your clock up. You wait and wait and wait, and sooner or later, you got to wind it again or, or to wind down. Well, they were deist. And I had a friend of mine, it's been 25, maybe 30 years ago, in Sunday school class. He said, I believe God created man. I said, okay, good. But he says, but I believe he walked away. He left us to our own desires. I'm like, no, no, he didn't. He's still, he's still very active in our affairs. He's still very active in, in our affairs. And I know he is in my life. And, and I know if I asked that I would get, I don't know how many testimonies in here, that God has been active in your life, in the actions of your life, in your affairs, in the last week. I mean, we could, we could fill up the rest of the afternoon talking about it, couldn't we? We could, absolutely. Absolutely. So he didn't... He didn't create us and walk away. He didn't create us and walk away. He puts, he loves us. He puts a great respect on us. And aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad of the abundance of kindness that he pours out on us every day? Every day, the abundance of kindness that he pours out on us. Do we deserve it? No. Nope. Man is above all the creatures in this world. We are the crown of his creation. We were, we were made a little lower than angels. Now, we're looking at the, at the creation. You have God. The angels are created beings. They did, he created them. And then God created everything else, but just a little bit lower than the angels are, is man. We were created to worship him, to have that relationship with God. But we are a little bit lower than angels. Our bodies, we're allied to the earth. Read the creation story. He took, he took the clay, he took the ground. He created man. When we die, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So we go back to it. We go back to it. So we are made a little lower. The animals that perish. Look, it's our souls. It's by our souls. Our souls are spiritual. They are immortal. So we are, so we are akin to the angels that we may, that it can be truly said we are a little lower than they are. When you look at the order, uh, uh, creation order next to them, we're a little lower. We live in a house of clay. These 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 bodies, their house of clay. I read one time uh, that was the body worth? Not much when you break it down to some minerals. What we're actually made of. We're not worth a whole lot. But to God, we're worth a whole lot. We are. Yep. So we're houses of clay. But as children of the resurrection, when we come to know Christ, when we come to know God, when Christ is in our hearts and our minds and we know him as our Lord and Savior, we become children of the resurrection, and we're no longer lower than the angels. I believe in Ephesians, you look, the angels look to us to see. They want an example. They don't understand this salvation. They don't have it. Man's reason is his crown of glory. We think. We think. But we must not profane that crown by disturbing the use of it. And we shouldn't forfeit that crown by acting contrary to what it dictates. In other words, we need to be obedient to God. We need to be obedient to his word. This is uh, going back a little bit to the children. 
I want to go back to this just for a minute. I, I know they're gone, but we still got some young people in here and got some, some young ones in here. Barna Institute. We think, well, I, we think that our children are good. They, they go to church. They're active in youth and everything like that. And then we send them off to college. And somewhere in there, they stop going to church. Maybe they stop believing or the doubt, skepticism, but they kind of get away from it. I know I did. But the Barna Institute, they're, they're, their research was this. It didn't, it didn't happen in college. It happened way before then. It happened way before then. So as children, young people, as adults in here, when you hear these new ideas, again, it's hard. When you hear the new ideas, take them back to the Word of God. Take them back to the Word of God. See how they stand up. If they don't stand up, dismiss it. Dismiss it. Dismiss it altogether because it's not the Word of God. Oh, me, I, funny story. I was at the post one day. We was having fish, fish fry. It's Friday. Woman comes in, she's talking to a man. He's come in, he wants a fish, he wants a fish plate, and, and, uh, uh, and he's a member of the post. And she says, fish on Friday, it's in the Bible. I'm like, no, it's not. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. It didn't say it in my Bible. But sometimes we can get led astray, but we need to test it against. And that's part of man's reason. We need to test it and don't just accept everything. Don't just accept things. Now, we must not profane it. But look, God has put all things under man's feet. Go back to the creation. God put Adam in the garden. He didn't put him in there to sit around and drink sweet tea all day. He put him in there to work. He had something for him to do. He had something for him to do. And we need to take care of things. God's intention was that Adam would take care of the garden. He would work and tend the garden. We need to take care of things. I'm not getting environmental on you. This is God's word, I believe, the way, I, the way I've read it and studied it. This is God's word. We need to take care of it. How many deer hunters? Okay. All right. If we kill every deer this year or the next year, are you going to be a deer hunter? Nope. All the deer are dead. They're gone. We need to take care of it. We need to manage. We need to, we need to take care of God's creation. We need to take care of God's creation. Now, David asked this, the second part of verse 4, and the son of man that you visit him. David asked this. That's the rest of this psalm. This talks about Jesus. This talks about Jesus. In Daniel chapter 7. Daniel talks about this. He talks about the son of man. This was Jesus' favorite term to refer to himself in the New Testament. The Son of Man. The, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they knew what he was talking about. They knew what he was talking about. And they didn't like it. But they knew what he was talking about. In Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter... Two, six through eight. But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. This verse is quoted in Hebrews here to prove the sovereign dominion of Christ in heaven 
and on earth that shows that he is the man that's talked about in Psalm 8. He is the man. God has crowned him with glory and honor. He's given him dominion over all the works of his hand. All the works of his hand. Everything. Now we have reason humbly to value ourselves by it and to admire the grace of God in it. Jesus assumed the nature of man. And in that nature, he humbled himself. For that little while, he was a little lower than the angels. He took upon him the role of a servant and made himself of no reputation. Now, I want you to understand this. Do not, do not, do not minimize Jesus. Jesus was fully God, yet he was fully man. He was fully God, yet he was fully man. He did not give up his deity. He was exalted to be Lord of all. God the Father exalted him. He humbled himself. He crowned him with glory and honor, the glory which Jesus had before the world was. Now let's, let's take just a couple of minutes here. Let's talk about Jesus. If we can, if we'd be so bold. The virgin birth is important to the Christian faith. Jesus had to be free from a sinful nature. That was passed on to all of us through Adam. Because Jesus was the son of God, he was born without that nature. He didn't have that sinful nature. Again, two kids, one toy. Jesus was born without any trace of that human sin. But because he was fully man, And I love this part of this. He fully understands us. He fully understands us. Our experiences and our struggles. I know when I got away from him and stuff. When I got away from him, I didn't get away from God. I got out of the habit of going to church. Got out of the Air Force, got married. Over the years, just... Trials and tribulations, the things that's happened. I didn't get mad at God. I didn't leave him. I didn't ask him why. I knew he, I knew he held me in his hand. I knew he still had me. No matter what I was going through, I knew it would be okay. I knew it would be okay. Because I knew he understood. And I knew he knew where I was at. He knows our experiences and our struggles. We didn't need an economist. We had him to send us an economist. He had sent somebody to help us with our financial troubles. We didn't need a great orator, orator to, to help us with the uh, legal stuff. We needed a savior. Jesus Christ. That's what he sent us. Because Jesus is God, he has the power and the authority to deliver us from sin. And Luke, I love this story. 
There's a leper. He, he don't have a spot or two. He's, he's, he's full leprous. He has leprosy. It's, it's not a little bit here and a little bit there. He has leprosy. And we don't know how long he had it, but he was a grown man. No contact with his family. No hug. No, no hug from the wife. No hug from the children. Nothing. You, you couldn't touch nobody. He heard Jesus was coming. So he goes and he's crying out. And I can just imagine if you read it, he's, he's in the crowd and he's crying out. He should have been shouting unclean, but he was shouting Jesus, Jesus. And he comes and he falls in front of him. And I can imagine the crowd around him saying, what is he doing? He's not even supposed to be here. He's not supposed to be close to us. His faith was in Jesus. He knew Jesus had the power to heal him. The problem was, he didn't know if Jesus was going to be willing to heal him. The man comes and he falls, he prostrates himself in front of Jesus. He says, Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. Jesus says, I am willing. I am willing. And he healed him. Jesus was willing to I don't know if he touched him. Scripture said he said, I'm willing, and he healed him. I don't know if he touched him. I don't know if he just, you healed. But he was willing. What is man that thou art mindful of him? God loves us. God honors us. God gives us an abundance of kindness. He shows us grace. He shows us mercy. Jesus did too. Jesus did too. What is man that thou art mindful of him? John 3, 16. For God so loved. I'm not going to say the world. We all know it. We all, all memorize that. I want you to take and put your name in there. For God so loved Luke. Chris. Justin. Put your name in there. Put your name in there. For God so loved old Paul that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus came to that cross. He had to die on that cross for us because God loved us. We had to have salvation. We had to be cleansed from our sin. So he had to become human. Jesus had to become human so he could die and rise to destroy Satan's power over death. When we, when we belong to God, we don't fear death. God places great value on human life. Jesus does also. You can read the healings. He, he, didn't, he didn't turn anybody away. He healed he healed. He placed great value on human life. When I think about today, the situation we're in, I get up and watch the news in the morning, I can't believe it. Man's inhumanity, man's depravity. It's always something. But God loves us. And he cares about us. Every one of us. A friend of mine once said, uh, a friend is somebody who loves you no matter how sorry you are. Thank God for Jesus. He loves us. Pastor Cameron, if you're here today, I don't know your heart. Young people, turn out tomorrow night for the men's study. Seasoned fellows like me, turn out. before he tries to get off. I did that in the first one. I just want to thank Paul again uh, for bringing what's on his heart to us and from God's word. And I, I, know it's, I know it's in his heart. Let's give Paul a hand for this morning. And just thank you for it. And we're, going to, we're going to have a time of invitation here in just a second, but I just want to ask you, you know, what's in your heart this morning? What's God talking to you about? 
he shows us through his word, and, and Paul's given us great scriptures more in Psalm 8 of how much he loves us. Why should he even be mindful of us with all that he is and all that he's done? It's because he created us and he loves us, and we are his, and he wants the best for us. So what do you want to do for the Lord in your life? What's he calling you to do? We're going to pray, and we're going to have a time of invitation. I'm just going to ask you to get, get, get with the Lord this morning and see what he's putting on your heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you again for this message, Lord, and thank you for Brother Paul coming this morning and speaking. Thank you for the men who served in the various ways this morning, Lord, as uh, we just look to honor you. And God, I just pray as uh, we're going to this time of invitation that uh, you speak to our hearts, Lord, whatever it might be. There, there are ones here this morning, Lord, that uh, they might be struggling with something. They love you. They know you as their, uh, their, your son as their savior, but uh, they're not close to you right now, Lord. Help them to come back close. There's there may be some here this morning that don't know your son, Lord, as your Savior. That's the most important decision they'll ever make, Lord. Speak to their hearts, Lord. Let them come forward, and uh, we'll help them, Lord, and uh, lead them in the path to you, God. I pray that you just uh, give us all your will for our lives, Lord, as we go into this time of singing, Lord. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Please stand as we have our time of invitation. as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I Again, if you're a guest, thank you for being here. And we do want to get to know you better and learn how we can serve you. And I pray for you. So just go over to our Welcome Center uh, right after I pray this morning. They do have a gift there for you. Uh, men, our next Men of Iron Bible Study, as Paul spoke about, is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So join us for an encouraging time of Bible study and fellowship as they continue in 33 the series. And uh, our monthly business meeting will be this Wednesday at 6.45 p.m. Uh, the Forge Men's Conference at Antioch Baptist Church is going to be, as we talked about earlier, Friday, February 3rd, and Saturday the 4th. Pastor Dave and David Chambers, Jeremy Quist, and Brad Wesley will be preaching at the conference, and the cost is only $15, and that includes dinner on Friday night and breakfast on Saturday morning. So men make plans to join us for that uplifting time of worship and fellowship and Bible study, and if you do plan on attending, just sign up over in the Welcome Center there, so we'll have a number for that. And uh, ladies, we are starting a new women's Bible study on February the 7th at 6.45 p.m. and would love for you to join. We'll be working through the study Jesus and Me by Ann Graham Lotz. And if you would like a study guide, you can sign up for one in the Welcome Center as well. And that again starts on February the 7th. And all children, kindergarten through fifth grade, are invited to our next children's ministry event on Sunday, February the 12th. That's going to be following the 11 a.m. service. We'll be going to Palace Point for pizza, bowling, and games. And so, parents, if your child plans to attend, please sign them up over in the Welcome Center and do that by February 5th so they'll have a number for that. 
And all ladies, we still do have a few spots open for the Women of Joy Conference in Myrtle Beach. It's going to be May 5th through May the 7th. If you're interested in attending that conference, please reach out to Jen Scholl for any information you need on that. Uh, and the final balances for the Women of Joy Conference are due by February the 5th. Uh, and the Baptist women are going to be making uh, blessing bags for the homeless again this year, and they need your help uh, donating items for those bags. There's going to be a sign-up sheet starting Wednesday over in the Welcome Center, so if you'd like to donate, you can sign up starting Wednesday night for those items. It's just a great way to meet some basic needs for the homeless and also, obviously, at the same time, share the gospel with them. So if you have any questions with that, you can see Kim Pearson or any of the Baptist women about that. And we are continuing to collect for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. Our church goal is $3,300, and uh, we are only $45 for reaching that goal. So amen for that. Uh, so if you haven't given yet, just uh, or, if, or if you feel like the Lord's leading you to give again, please do so. Uh, we have specially marked envelopes at the, um, at the offering boxes for that. And uh, just to, to notice that the contribution statements for 2022 are ready, and you can pick those statements up from the mailboxes over in the Welcome Center. Let's go to Lord in prayer. God, again, thank you for this day and just thank you for loving us, Lord. Give us opportunities this week to share this love with others. Let us be bold for you, Lord. Let us be mindful of who you are and who we are in you, Lord. We pray all this in your precious son's name. Amen.